Hello, and welcome to Weekly Dev Tips. I'm your host, Steve Smith, a.k.a. R. Dallas. This is episode 20, where we'll explore abstraction levels and how they relate to authorization in your applications. Don't forget, you can follow Weekly Dev Tips on Twitter, as well as in your favorite podcast app. And if you're finding these tips to be helpful, please take a moment to leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. I really appreciate it. This episode is sponsored by DevIQ. DevIQ offers online training for software developers and designers covering topics like UX, .NET development, and I also have a course there on ASP.NET Core. Check them out at deviq.com. Let's take a quick break from some of the more commonplace design patterns I've covered in the last few episodes and talk a little bit about abstraction levels and how they impact duplication and technical debt in our software designs. You can think of high levels of abstraction as being at the level of the real-world concept that your software is modeling. For an e-commerce application, it might be buying something or adding an item to a cart. The whole notion of a cart or shopping basket is a metaphor explicitly pulled into e-commerce applications from the real world. There's certainly no literal cart or basket involved in most online shopping experiences. Low levels of abstraction refer to implementation details used by the actual software and sometimes hardware used by the system. When developing software, it's a good design decision to encapsulate low levels of abstraction separately from higher levels, and thus to avoid mixing abstraction levels more than necessary within any given module. The more you mix the abstraction levels, the more you add tight coupling to your design, making it harder to change in response to future requirements. A common requirement in many applications is authorization. Authorization is often conflated with the other auth word, authentication. Authentication is the process of determining who the user is. Authorization is the process of determining whether a particular user should be allowed to perform a certain operation. It can include default rules for anonymous users, but aside from that, authorization generally only makes sense once authentication has taken place and you know who the user is. Authorization rules can take many forms and can be as granular as specifying that a specific user has access to a specific resource. However, most applications that need authorization will leverage roles or claims to specify how groups of users should or should not have access to certain sets of resources. This makes it much easier to manage collections of users and collections of resources, since otherwise a huge number of specific user-to-resource rights would need to be maintained. However, even this is often prone to duplication that results from too low of an abstraction level. For example, it's common in platforms like .NET to use roles as at least one part of determining authorization and to use conditional logic like if user dot is in role admins, then give them the right to do something. Doing this sort of an if check anytime authorization logic needs to be performed can be somewhat repetitive. In any non-trivial system that uses this pattern, you'll probably find quite a few lines of code that match this expression, meaning there is quite a great deal of duplication. Now, duplication isn't always bad, but in this case, the implementation detail of performing a role check as one part of checking whether a user is authorized to access a particular resource is adding to the system's technical debt. Frequently, authorization rules will change over time. What happens when a new role or set of claims is created that should have access to some resources? Every one of the if statements related to access to that resource will need to be modified. What happens if you switch from using roles to claims? Again, every if statement will need to be modified. Of course, when these modifications take place, there's also the chance that bugs will be introduced, and these will manifest in many cases as security breaches because, again, we're talking about authorization. There are many patterns that you could use to improve this design. You can use a more declarative approach, such that adding certain attributes will protect certain endpoints in your application. This can remove conditional logic and can eliminate some duplication since many times these attributes can be applied at class or even base class levels. This is how ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core, API, and MVC authentication work in this case. However, if your authorization logic is more complex than simple role membership, it may not be sufficient, or at the very least, you might need to write your own attributes or filters. Another approach I've found useful is to create a first-class abstraction that describes whether a given user should have access to a given resource. I typically call such types privileges, but you can refer to them as authorization policies or whatever makes sense to you and your team if you prefer. A privilege takes in who the user is and what resource they're attempting to work with, 
and then specifies what operations that user can or cannot perform on that resource. Since it's a design pattern, not a specific solution, how you implement the details is up to you. A common approach is to implement methods for things like can read, can create, can modify. These methods can then be called within your application in order to determine whether a particular user can perform a particular operation. You could also set this up such that it returns back some kind of a permission table that gives you all of these with a single method call. It's totally up to you. You can also further modify this pattern so that it works with a collection of resources or for a certain class or type of resource. So that, for example, if the user wanted to be able to manage product definitions, you could check whether the user has rights to the type product, and if so, you could use that to add a link to the Manage Products part of the application in its menu. I have an article describing how to use privileges instead of repetitive role checks that I'll link to in the show notes that may help you get started if you're interested in learning more. Would your team or application benefit from an application assessment, highlighting potential problem areas, and identifying a path toward better maintainability? Contact me at ourdallas.com and let's see how I can help. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening. See you next time on weeklydevtips.com.